Well, happy Thanksgiving. Here's a pond status update. Water level. The intake bay here is connected in. Water's come up, filled all of our bays. We're about six inches low right now. And how quickly it's come up since our latest leak treatment with our with our pipe experiment we've we've stopped up a good portion of the leak right there i think we're still losing about an a half of an inch a day we've got our tape measure out here on this tape 33 inches is going to be our full pool and so we're at 27 the waters up to the waterfall guys we haven't seen this in over six months if you recall the pipe when we put it in protruded out from the water about four to five inches higher than the water level and as we sprinkled polymer and some bentonite clay to help bring the polymer down to the pond bottom it helped seal it up so after we've placed this pipe down here less than two weeks ago the water has risen considerably in the pond almost a foot and a half and so now the pipe is still in place but it's well underwater I mean the top of the pipe is yeah it's it's at least a a foot underwater right now <clears throat> and so I'm back out here two weeks later just gonna take a peek and see what things look like underwater to do a quick recap of where we've come from this is what our leak looked like initially when we found it that big crater in the ground led to a a gaping hole probably three four inches wide as I lower the camera down into it to see how swiftly the water was sucking all of the clay particles that I was knocking down into the hole. The velocity at which the water is leaving the pond here, I estimate that we were losing up to 100,000 gallons a day out this hole. And you can see the, the fibers and the clay and the like dust particles, that's just water sucking and rushing out of the bottom of the pond. And so it's no wonder our pond was leaking so bad. You can watch the full progression of our pond leak videos in our playlist. But here's just a reminder that after we applied one polymer and clay treatment, we reduced the sidewalls considerably. And then with some mechanical treatment, we were able to knock some of that material and, and that polymer gooey jelly substance down into the hole and ultimately set this pipe over top of the hole. It didn't work out exactly the way I planned, but it's definitely helped. I want you to notice the black Sharpie line that's right above the green ratchet strap holding our, our base on there. Because here, after all of our po polymer treatments, that Sharpie line is now, that entire base of the pipe is solidified into the bottom of the pond. And here are bentonite particles being dropped down in this area, sitting on top of polymer and clay. And again, more of these holes looked like they opened up, but again, as I drop more bentonite and clay down onto it, they just rest right on the surface. And it's not getting sucked down into that hole. And so, after multiple attempts to try to locate a leak around this pipe, I just haven't seen it. Even the perch were getting scared away as I was dropping the bentonite particles down onto it. And here is a layer of polymer. The walleye swimming by and a smallmouth comes swimming through the surface. That kind of white film is polymer. And I dumped bucket after bucket of clay and continuing to build a mound around this pipe that I think is going to end up being a permanent fixture in our pond somehow because I just don't want to disturb 
all of the goodness that we've established so far. And what I've been doing is trying to layer polymer and clay and polymer and clay, creating the layers of sealant just to strengthen that whole area down there. That mound was created by a couple buckets of clay that I dumped right down in one spot. And so that undulation can only help with the structure. Here I've even got a little bit of contour around that pipe, making it more of a permanent fixture in our pond. We got a bunch of extra remnants of rock and landscape block from a project that we're going to come out here and dump out here in the deep part create a little bit of rocky structure when you've got leftover patio blocks nothing more to do with those than Sleeps with the fishes. All right. Let's go see what that looks like down there. I loaded the pontoon with as much weight as I possibly could with three trips and already that smallmouth has taken up residence next to this rock pile. They all didn't get piled up exactly on top of each other as the rocks fell into place but I happened to find exactly the edge of where a steep drop the bottom flat of the pond and so that rock just on that edge would just be a little bit of holding structure for the fish. I might even add to this pile. As I drifted around, as the weather has gotten colder and the water colder, I've noticed that the fish have come up into shallower sections of the pond and here on the side slopes, all the diversity that you see in the pond with the tadpole swimming in and amongst the smallmouth and the walleyes and the bluegill and the red ear sunfish right here. I didn't get any perch in this shot, but uh, trust me, they're down there and you'll see a lot more of those coming. So guys, I think that this pipe might just end up being a permanent fixture in the pond. I think that I'll be able to take the ropes off. It's pretty solid down there. I don't know. I think I could probably do more harm than good if I tried to pull that up out of the hole. It's already a foot under the surface here and the water's gonna rise another foot. I don't know what that would hurt for this pipe to be sitting here two feet under the surface of the water. I think I'm gonna let it sit here through the winter and, and see. So come springtime, when we turn this waterfall on, this is gonna be the lifeblood right here in this shallow area in the springtime with all of the oxygenated water and the more rock that we'll add in here i'm not sure if we'll get the pumps in before winter or not um really we don't need to run the waterfall other than we're just anxious to see it and i know you are too so thanks for thanks for watching and uh hanging with us this year as we've dealt with some of our challenges. But um, guys, look at this. We've got water all up in our bays now. Here's our rock island. Sitting pretty there. Here's a quick tour around the pond with a close up of the rocks. To manage a pond well, it requires consistent maintenance all the time. And there's just some things that we neglected this year in our attempt to stop our leak. So we had to make a priority call and these grass clippings that we shaved from the side hills are floating on the pond and they're going to sink to the bottom and create a bunch of biomaterial for algae to grow in next year, but it's just going to have to wait. So we'll leave this one aerator going throughout the winter, I believe. I'll leave a hole in the ice right here, but that will allow all the gases to escape out that hole and reduce the chance of any kind of fish kill 
over the winter. So we got the patio all put together. Each one of these stones in place to create a, a fun staircase. And again, next to the the boulder wall with the Adirondack swivel rockers. We want to get this waterfall fired up for you at home and for us here to be able to see it in its full glory. But we just don't know what the weather has in store. We got three inches of snow over the weekend, and so we'll see how long that lasts and what the weather has in store. But thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. God bless.